My girl cheated on me with my, one of my friends. I cannot find a loyal woman. I still love my ex. I'm not really looking for anything in life right now other than just like goals, gains. Guys are expected to be, you know, six feet tall, six figures, and they're kind of shunned upon without it. And ultimately life is more than that. The biggest issue plaguing Gen Z is the belief that society owes us something by the virtue of existing. That's simply because we are conscious beings. We are owed affirmation, attention, respect, and love without any effort on our behalf to earn these things. One can see this delusion acted out through the cults of victimhood that we, Gen Z, so eagerly adopt. Fat acceptance, the obsession with trauma, the obsession with identity, aspects of feminism and the men's rights movements. Anything to exclaim the deluded generational ubiquity, my life Life is hard and I'm not getting the recognition I deserve. Inversely, there are also ideologies to rectify this generational sin of pride. For every young person asking why society has let them down, there are also those who seek to change their lives through action and knowledge. These young people attempt to take off the rose-tinted glasses and shed the misguided expectations that have left them disappointed with life. They do this by adopting the harshest worldview possible, by seeing every aspect of personal relationships, romantic relationships, and society at large as an inequitable power struggle where only the coldest and strongest survive. This collection of hyper-rational worldviews has come to be colloquially known as the red pill. Many of us see this as the only path out of our malaise, allowing us to be invincible from heartbreak and disappointment. But is this school of thought really the saving grace it claims to be? Or does it leave its adherents with the same delusion it claims to cure? So are you single? That's a loaded question. I am single because I'm looking for the one. There's not a lot of time in the day. There's a lot of things to get done. Uh, life's just changing all the time. It's hard to stay in one place. Taking the red pill implies shedding your old beliefs and adopting new ones that challenge everything you previously knew. This is a reference to the Matrix where Morpheus gives the protagonist the following choices. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Your new uncomfortable truths aim to set you free. This is what makes the red pill so pervasive, is it can be applied to anything, from a diet, to politics, to economic, to relationships. And although it's taken on a far greater meaning, the red pill has its origins in men's dating advice in online spaces. In this context, you're shedding your previous beliefs on women and intergender relationships for something that feels and appears more real compared to the hokey Hollywood narratives we're all programmed to believe. Someone who has been red-pilled in this sense will undergo the following ideological transitions. This is the application of the red pill I'm gonna be focusing on because it's the most I recently made a takedown video on Pearl Davis, and that video got a lot of love and a lot of hate. Much of the hate came from the fact that I only really talked about Pearl and didn't engage with many red pill talking points. And then that, that then it goes to green screen. That's the there's a green screen next. I make, I make that face and it like zooms in and like, like oh, yeah. pop up like fast jazz. Okay, so there's two types of red pill talking points. The first is just stats. You read stats, you say the stats. It's just stats. Don't, don't ask questions. The second type of red pill talking point is pseudoscience. Evolutionary pseudoscience that comes to you in visions. Now, to address the first, the statistics. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I'm not gonna censor myself. Men have it rough. We're going through it, okay? Men are far more likely to be homeless, commit suicide, and die of a drug overdose. Women are increasingly more likely to be admitted to university than men, and more likely to graduate as men are dropping out of university at record numbers. Women are on track to outnumber men in university two to one. Even though this ratio was equal 40 years ago, men are more likely to be sentenced to jail than women are for the same crime, and are sentenced to serve 63% longer amounts of time than women are. Also, we're far more likely to be victims of a violent crime. This whole thing about walking home at night, how scary that is. Just statistically, men have to deal with that more than women. I could make an entire video just listing stats like this. There's so many of them, man. But there's one major issue with these statistics. You only ever hear about them as a counter argument to feminists. No one talks about men's issues as independent. They're only ever used as counter arguments. The red pill teaches you that women are our oppressors 
and that the world is becoming completely gynocentric. That's an ideologically lazy narrative, and it weaponizes your anger and your depression for clicks. And in contrast to that, the truth is complicated and unmarketable. There's a myriad of political, economic, and societal reasons all intersecting that are causing the malaise of young men. The more we frame men's issues as the fault of women, the farther we get from an actual solution. But the red pill doesn't want solutions. The red pill just wants to be right. This mentality leads us to the second type of red pill talking points. This is where you're gonna find all your classic pseudoscientific evolutionary psychology. Don't trust women with tattoos, don't trust women with body hair, piercings, or women who went to university. This is a perfect example of conspiratorial thinking. Humans think in binaries. Humans think in dichotomies. We don't really fill in the space between yes and no. And that's why conspiratorial thinking is so easy for us. And also a process called if-then thinking. Here's a great example. If the government implements gun control laws, then the government must be planning some sort of population control. We don't think about the in-between of those two processes. It just seems like a natural next step. It's really easy to come to that conclusion. Another example. If most women gain custody of children, then women must be owed to rob men of their resources. See what I'm saying? Same thing. It's an easy jump. There's no golden rules with people. They're as complicated and as nuanced as you feel yourself to be. Believing that you can predict somebody's behavior based on observations and statistics is as delusional as believing that women will like you if you're just a nice guy. Unless, of course, you just never talk to women. In that case, they're as evil as you want them to be. People want what they can't have. We're straying away from the path of what's important and ultimately that is two people connecting. With hookup culture, we have so much access to so many people. One issue happens, now, no, I'm just gonna move on from you. Do you feel like you made mistakes in your previous relationship that you wouldn't make now, like you grew because of it? Yes, yeah, I, I did grow out of it too. If I do marry again, Remember, marriage is a holy thing, bro. So if you get married, you have to take the relationship very seriously. We are stuck in the never-ending march of time. And things just keep happening at the same pace they've always happened. Just when you think you've found an answer, just when you think you've reached conclusions in your life, the next moment comes along, it all up. The red pill is an alluring philosophy because it ignores this fundamental condition of existence. It gives you a moment to point to in your life where you finally woke up. Before you were red pilled, you were naive, you were weak, you were a pathetic beta. And then afterwards, everything changes. You're a changed man. You see the world differently. You're seen in 4D. Humans love this sort of control because we don't have any. <laughs> We used to rectify this lack of control by giving ourselves over to a god and letting him take over. In absence of religion, in absence of a god, we now worship ourselves. Christopher Hitchens once said, We are unlikely to cease making gods or inventing ceremonies to please them for as long as we are. Afraid of death or of the dark, and for as long as we persist in self-centeredness, ha 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 ha. Hitchens is speaking on if humans can ever be non-religious. And what he means is that even if Christianity or any other major religion fully dissolves, humans will always create new religion-like structures to follow. Adopting a religion-esque framework like the Red Pill, and then falling into the aforementioned conspiratorial then-if thinking, one can begin to see reality through an entirely diluted lens. Even as diluted as this putrid blue pill betas, you binge watch Red Pill content, where the female guests constantly prove the core tenets to be true. Your friends tell you about their most recent breakup, centered on their now ex-girlfriends cheating, and you can't help but think that this is women expressing their true, genuine nature of use and abuse. Everything you see suddenly becomes proof of your belief system. You can basically build your own narrative in your head and gaslight yourself into believing it. We're at a crossroads here because there's obviously truth to the red pill. There's truth to the red pill by the virtue of how many men are seeking it out. If there was nothing wrong, if there was nothing to rectify, then men wouldn't be seeking out this advice in the first place. It's not like this ideology has captured millions on the grounds of nothing. So what do we do here? Here's an experiment. Ask a woman, would you rather a guy send you this text? Ha oh, ha yeah, I'm down for whatever. I'm free whenever you are and I literally don't care where we go, so just let me know what we're doing when you can. Or this text. Saturday the 15th at 8.30. I'll meet you at the restaurant. I'll be waiting on the patio. This is a question I've asked a lot of the women in my life. Now why would I ask such an autistic question to the people I date? Because I'm f***ed. 
But what do you think the answer is? Literally always the second option. And I ask this question because it's not hypothetical. I've seen men send that first text thinking they're being sweet and accommodating. Men that are scared to be direct and upfront with what they want because they believe it's disrespectful and patronizing to do so. This is where the red pill does prove to be useful. Even necessary in some sense, if you've gone your entire adult life thinking that intergender relationships are perfectly balanced and fair, you're in for a rude awakening. And someone who believes that is bound to be destroyed destroyed by someone who believes the opposite. Women like confident men, men who have their shit together, men who have a future, men with the competence to take care of themselves and go to the gym, men who don't bend over backwards for everyone who asks them to. None of this is controversial or esoteric. Even though, I don't know, for some reason the red pill loves to gatekeep basic human psychology. They use all these like little acronyms and nicknames to describe like just very fundamental concepts that everyone already knows. Now the issue with these red pill teachings is why the red pill teaches it to you. The red pill has you believe that women like these traits because women are manipulative succubi who want you wrapped around their finger. The actual reason? Because these are the traits of a good f***ing human being. These are the traits of a good friend, a good boss, a good father, a good partner. Everybody wants people like this in their lives. They know what's going on. They can explain the chaos around them. What does the philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer and the 90s hit anime Neon Genesis Evangelion have in common? They both speak of the hedgehog's dilemma. Any relationships that have, like ended really badly or? Oh well, yeah, there were many. Uh, my girl cheated on me with my one of my friends. You could pass it broke that. me for three years. Yeah. I never did it for three years. Yeah. You trust me, three years I took a break. And she started making moves again, wanting to do something. She then <laughs> had some commitment issues, I guess. Her uh, priorities in life were mixed up. I realized that that wasn't good. And just where I was in life, it wasn't the right move for me. You know, the dating scene of just hookup culture gets very old very fast. And again, it's it's masking something. It's not authentic. and. You know, it's, it's not something that is going to bring you further in life and make you happier. On a cool night, as hedgehogs huddle together to keep each other warm, they can't help but prick each other with their spines. And the closer they get, the more they hurt each other. This is used as a parable for human intimacy. The more you seek to cure your loneliness, the more vulnerable you are with them, the more likely you are to get hurt by your vulnerability. A good life is everything in moderation. And you've been told this your whole life, but it doesn't make for a great TikTok clip, so it doesn't really stick. No matter what ideology you adopt, you'll never fully protect yourself from grief and heartbreak. And ultimately, that's all the red pill aims to do for you. Life is a delicate balance between crippling loneliness and painful vulnerability. The red pill makes you depressed and the blue pill makes you an idiot. Life is more complicated than anyone can possibly sum up and only you know the solutions to your own problems. Abandon ideology. Why? Because the truth will set you free. Hey, thank you so much for watching my video. We got two classics up here on the screen. If you want to check it out, if you want to support me, support the channel. We got the Patreon, we have my Instagram, join the Discord. We're on this journey together. We're going to figure out what life is all about because uh, no one taught me. So I have to figure it out on my own. And I'm sure you're in the same boat as me. I love you. God bless. And never kill yourself.